Lung cancer is caused by the human genes, not by smoking. Horse milk ice cream can help with digestion. When a cow has a name, she produces a much better milk. These are scientific studies. Researchers have done scientific research, collected data, and proved what I just mentioned earlier. The data were there, but doesn't mean is the study true. Even when the numbers are correct, you can still tell a different story, the story that you want to tell. You're not lying, but you're choosing your own conclusion. Manipulation data like this could be done so easily. And today, I'll be talking about two ways that researchers can skew their data to reach the conclusion that they want. First is cherry picking. That's when a scientist will look at all the data that he or she collected and only select the data that supports the hypothesis that they want, and they will toss the rest. In a study a few years back showed that the top universities in the United States have a 45% acceptance rate to men and 35% acceptance rate to women. Now, looking at this, you might think, hmm, this sounds like a really solid study that supports women discrimination. But let's look deep into the data. In some of the majors, for example, like in medicine, sociology, and, and like literature, the rate of men and women applicants who got accepted were almost the same. In fact, in some of them, women were having a higher acceptance rate than men. But in some other fields, like engineering, women tend to not apply to these fields as much as men do. So there are way more men applying for these fields against women. Therefore, of course, there are gonna be way more men accepted in these fields towards women. So by choosing only these data that supports your hypothesis, you can conclude that more men are accepted into universities than men and than women. Again, you're not lying. The data is, is there. You're just choosing exactly what you want to show and then throw away the rest. The second tactic is causation versus correlation. Just because two variables are changing at the same time doesn't mean one of them is causing the other. The cause might be something else, or it might be the other way around. In a published research study showed that lack of exercise is the main cause of obesity. Now, that sounds sensible. But how did the, research, the, the, the researcher reach that conclusion? So the researcher got a sample of people who suffer from obesity and asked them about their lifestyle, what kind of food they ate, whatever. And then he asked the question, how often do you exercise? And he noticed that the majority of them never actually exercise. So he reached the conclusion, well, since most of them don't exercise, it's a clear indication that lack of exercise causes obesity. But is that actually true? You see, if you think about it, and I know that you have people that you know who are not obese, and yet they never even exercised. So how come? Maybe when you are obese, it's difficult for you to even start exercising. So maybe it's your food or your diet intake that causes the obesity, not the exercise. However, obesity and lack of exercise are correlated, but they're not causing each other. Another study, which I found really weird, showed that excessive intake of ice cream might cause skin cancer. Now you're thinking, what? How? 
So the researcher in this study took a sample of people who suffer from skin cancer and asked them about their daily life three or six months prior to their diagnosis. And he found that prior to being diagnosed with skin cancer, they were eating a lot of ice cream. So he concluded, aha, uh -huh. then I guess eating ice cream causes skin cancer. But let's wait for a minute. Think about it. During summertime, people tend to eat a lot of ice cream. And the excessive exposure to heat without any protection definitely will harm your skin. So the sun was both causing the skin cancer and the excessive intake of ice cream. So both of them were correlated, but none of them was causing the other one. Now at the end, you might ask yourself, why would a scientist do that? Why would a researcher play with data that way to come up with such a conclusion? Well, for most of these scientists, sadly, doing research is their livelihood. But they cannot do the research without funding. Who's going to fund the research? Well, a corporation might. A company will jump in and will give you the money to fund your research only if you can come up with a conclusion that supports their agenda. Do you remember the exercise, the lack of exercise study that causes obesity? That was funded by Coca-Cola. Figures. So the next time you read on your BuzzFeed something weird like eating frog legs will give you longevity or something, apply your common sense first. Not every research can be believed.